Questions and I'm going to come around and give you the mic. Yeah, I, I like questions really. Yeah. I prefer that than hearing myself talk for an you hour. You did tell so me that. Please. Like, um, I'm going to I'm going to hand over the mic because I want you guys to be able to interact with him. Um, but just remember, this is Joe's show, so take that how you like. Oh no. You said something that bothered me a little bit. You said that the sun shows up when a kid is shot. Um, what do you think that says about us? Is mass consumers of information, and, and more importantly, what do you think that says about what the sun thinks of us as mass consumers of information? Well, I think that um, it's excellent. It's a good question. Uh, thank you for not asking about f-stops or something. I was just worried about it. <laughs> no, but that's, that, 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 that's a great question. And I mean, it's, you know, they're, they're a huge media organization. And we live in a very, uh, I mean, if, you know, the, the old slogan, if it bleeds, it leads. And that comes from somewhere. Um, they, I, I don't want to, I, I want to retract a little bit because they're friends of mine. So uh, that might have been a little snide to say they only show up when, when a kid's gone down. But I, I think that, that just says that this is what people want to consume. They don't want to see the photo of the guard with the little girl. They want to see the gore. And we've conditioned people through our, our media, all media. I mean, who, who wants to watch a show called Real Housewives about actual real housewives that have fun with each other. No, we want to watch them. No, I, 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 yeah, it's serious. You don't want to watch that. You want to watch them bicker and fight and argue. And we're, we're, we're telling people that that behavior is OK. And when, when you see you know, what, you know, why I'm not, a, I'm not in war zones is I don't think I could do any good other than to take photos of bleeding people for my own benefit, which means awards and prizes and things like that. Um, so I, I guess that's why they do it. They do it because it runs on page one. We're with the city paper. We're a weekly, so I have a little bit more latitude. We don't put that on our covers. You know, we try to get the story behind why the kid was shot or to meet the people behind that. Did that answer your question? Yeah, we could talk afterwards. I, I, I articulate much better one-on-one, -on -one, so. Let's come over there. I want to grab you because I know you had a question. Oh, thank you. Um, do I need to say anything? Anyway, hi, thank hi. you for being here. Um, my question is about um, sort of prescience. Like, we called it Summer of the Gun because what ended up happening over the course of three months is that so many people died. How on earth could you have possibly known when it was starting that this was headed in this way? The murder rate could have just like dropped, out, the floor could have dropped out of it somewhere in the middle. And as well as the fact that you had to, a few people, you had to miss a few, I'm guessing, before you caught the pattern. Yeah, it, 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 I, I did it in about, actually, I did it a week. I started a week after the first day of summer. And uh, the, the week before, there was a quadruple shooting. There were six other shootings in one weekend. That's where it came from. I didn't see any signs of it slowing down. It's Baltimore. <laughs> and I mean, that's, that's glib and it's nigh, but it's the truth. Um, there's no illusions. It's not going to take a drop until we do a lot. But that's, that's where it came from. And I knew going into the project that that's what I wanted to call it, because I was just focusing on the, the gun homicides. So. Thanks. Well, I know Megan. She's lady over here. She works Fair. here. She works Good here. Show. She came out, she works here. Hi, my name, You're is, next, Megan. Okay. my name is Danae Barr, and I'm a, a fine arts photographer and a photojournalist as well. And I really appreciate the stunning, stunning, poignant photographs that you brought to us today. Um, and it, they're just amazing. Thank you. And you made several good points. Uh, first of all, I really feel that, that, that people who are true photographers, they should actually be doing the work. I, don't, I think, you know, all these other cameras, et cetera, and they should hire those photographers, it makes a tremendous difference. And you saw from the quality of the work in terms of not only the context, but also the execution of the photographs. And I want to ask you a question about this, because I know like for photographers, this is this is such a tough time. And, and for photojournalists, you know, a lot of them, you know, out of work and everything, and 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 and, and seeing that that you commenting on that person that went to Micah and, they, and they're living at poverty level and you know, et cetera. In terms of um, how would I want to put it, like crowdfunding, for example, mm -hmm. crowdsourcing photographers. Do you, you know, for someone, for example, who wants to go into photojournalism, mm -hmm. um, what are your kind of your recommendations or suggestions to them? In go terms into plumbing or HVAC. <laughs> 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 Do you, you want to help people hearts. be a carpenter? Only the you two diehards. <laughs> Only the two diehards, huh? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, again, I mean, for someone, if uh, crowdfunding is great, I, I think 
crowdfunding to me is amazing. I haven't I haven't done it yet because I think it's kind of a done in one. So I want to get a project that's really that I really want to use that one card for. Mm -hmm. Um, but it, like I said, I mean, getting into it, as I'm a photo editor, so I see a lot of photographs and I see random students sending me stuff. I've yet to see a package come in and say, hey, would you run this? Which, if it's great, I'll, and I just sent an email out to the, to the photographers of the paper. I want more series out of you guys. And that's, that's the only way to do it. And, and I think that's how you're going to get the attention of big magazines now is just coming to them and saying, hey, you know, I live at the poverty level in Baltimore. I'm also a photojournalist. So I've been documenting my family for a year. And that's the stuff that goes viral and gets picked up. So that, that's what I would say. I mean, get, get a nice, tight series together and just start marketing it. Can Megan ask one now? Yes, Megan. <laughs> I'm kidding. Thanks, Joe. Um, I was wondering if you could speak more to the ethics of all of this. Like, are there hard and fast rules or laws about how involved you can be in a story? Or is it sort of? like up to your discretion or just kind of well, like be no, a good person? I mean, ethically, um, you don't need model releases for anything done publicly on the street so far. Um, there's a few precedents for that um, in the Supreme Court, which I can tell you after is a fascinating story about that, actually, involving a rabbi and a fashion photographer. Um, <laughs> it's true. That sounds like the start of a good joke. It's, it's true. I know. It's true. No, this, uh, long story short, this, this very famous photographer, Philippe Yorker de Corsia, was doing a series called Heads, and he set these strobe lights up in Times Square, and he was 500, yard, or 500 yards away, shooting with a long lens, and people were randomly snapping off the strobes. It was a trigger, and he would just shoot when they were walking by, and everything around him was dark except for the, these heads. So a rabbi uh, ended up on the cover of the book and sued because he didn't want his image out there. He's a Hasidic Jew, didn't want his image out there. And he lost because he was on a public street. So that, that trumped religious law. So there's, that's your, that's your uh, precedent for that kind of thing. Um, ethics is up to the person, really, taking the picture. I mean, you know, do you want to hover around someone who's been killed and just snap away and then leave? I mean, that, that's up to you. But there's no, there's no hard and fast rules to, to ethics with photojournalism. Um, that's, I mean, <laughs> okay. Fair. Anyone? Um, hey, Rachel. Um, I actually just wanted to ask about um, your relationship. So I, I know you, you mentioned, you know, introducing yourself and asking, relate, you know, um, what's your relationship with the victim and all of that stuff. But I just find it so interesting because, I mean, I'm no photographer myself, but I, I really like to take photos and, and document things and, and sometimes I'll see someone that looks really interesting or whatever and it's like, I don't, I don't know, I'm like, what the, like getting something candid as, a, and, as opposed to like the kind of better thing to do would be to be like, can I take a photo, you know what I mean? I don't know, obviously you're a professional, but What's the kind of, do you know, do you know what I'm trying to say? Sorry. Uh, <laughs> what I'm trying to I say. I got the like part. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm trying to, like, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so you don't want to introduce yourself and make it a whole, like, can I take a photo of you? Because right. you want to get the candid moment, but then it's kind of rude to just, is it? I don't well, know. It, no, no, that, that, that's a How good question. And it, it's a case by case basis. Um, I'm not, you know, if something catches my eye, I'll shoot it, and then I'll go, I'll at least try to interact with the person that I've shot. I mean, and not, not, every, not every photo is going to be like that. I'm not going to stand up here and lie and say that I talk to everybody at every crime scene, because I don't. I mean, like the, you know, the, the uh, let's see. This one uh, is a perfect example. Of the of the square where the where the sheet was up, because it was killed over off of um, off of Park Heights. Where we at? So for the the neighbors, <coughs> that one. So yeah, I didn't talk to anybody there, but what I did was I, I did have a lot of I, one thing. That I, oh, I have to like patience. Wait, 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 wait for a photo. Were you with me at at? Um, no, yeah, at, at, at Heather Missouri's thing, right? Yeah, so this, I waited for someone to get into that window, like the guy smoking a cigarette. Um, I waited for about 20 minutes. I just stood there. Like, eventually, someone's going to stand in that window, and that's going to fill that shot. 
and he did, and he had a cigarette, and it was great. But this is, the, this is one of the only times where I was kind of looked at like suspiciously, because this was away from the crime scene. This is around, like, around the corner in the courtyard. Um, so I didn't really interact on that, my point is, on that photo as much as I, maybe I should have. But it came out, I think, I mean, it came out pretty, pretty decent. Uh, the Heather Missouri photo, I wish I had put that in there. Um, it was the Maryland Historical Society, and they had these big windows. And I knew that she was going to walk up this ramp by herself because I saw her partner leave already. And Audrey, we were there for 45 minutes waiting her almost for an hour just for this one photo. And she walked up the ramp, and I got it right in the window with her all by herself with her phone on this long walk at the end, which is, you know, so patience, everyone. Don't snap away. Um, Any more? Is it, did it answer your question at all? About, about interacting? I mean, yeah, it, it's, it's case by case, is the long story short. Um, if, if you see, you know, with the aunt, that was me walking up to her and talking to her first. Um, if I'd have seen that from far away, would I have taken it? I don't know. I can't, I can't really say if I'd have taken that shot or not. But it's, it's on a case by case basis. Oh, she, oh. She, you guys had the same question. <laughs> There's no beer, Bob. Sorry. I thought that was going to be your question. <laughs> um, I like what you said about you're looking for more series of photos from your photographers rather than anybody can, obviously, anybody take one photo. That doesn't make it good or bad, but you get a different idea of the perspective of what the problem is or what the situation is if you can appreciate yourself how your photographer is entering that problem, how he sees it, and what point he's trying to make. And I think if, if I'm making sense what I'm saying. Or she. I like that. Or she. <laughs> preferably she, of course. But I like your she right, on the other end of the camera. To, no. <laughs> That's just me. Or I. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Elena? Oh, I thought you had, she had a no, question. No. Sorry, I thought you were going to speak to that. Oh, we have time for one more question, and then I have a question. We can, we can squeeze two in. Okay. I've got nowhere to be. I've actually got to go to New York for Fashion Week after this, so I'm, I'm serious. <laughs> I'm going to leave here, and yeah, I'm shooting up there. Yes. Yeah. I'm wondering, if, is there a line that you don't cross? Is there an ethical, ethical line for you as, a, as an individual opposing, as a photographer, that you say no to? It's, it's a good question because I have an internal debate about that all the time. And I, I don't know. I haven't come across a situation yet where I, I would really have to step back and say, don't take that photo. And I, I think um, there's, a, there's actually, I mean, there's, there's a great series on domestic violence that came out. Um, did you see that one? It came out maybe last year. And the woman was in the house when this guy was beating on the wife. And she took the photos, and then she called 911. She took a, I mean, she took a huge hit online because people didn't know the whole story, and they thought that she was there to observe. Um, I don't know if I could have taken those photos first. And maybe it's because it's a, it's a guy thing, like the, the hero thing, I would have stepped in. Um, I don't know, but I haven't come across a situation yet, like the, the, the baby and the vulture. I would have taken that kid, I would have probably gotten the photo because I saw it first, took it real quick, and then taken that child over to the refugee center instead of just leaving it there to go on to my next photo. Th that's what I, I worry about more, but I haven't been in a situation where I've, I've had, to, had to question myself. It hasn't been that bad yet, so. We'll see. But I'll, I'll call you. I'll be like, Elena, this is your answer. I'm not taking this photo. Um, I, I, I am starting a series on HIV teens. So that, that may, I'm, I'm really curious because that question may come up. So we, one more. Yes. Um, it's actually two, but really short. One, That's fine. I'm curious why you chose black and white for the gun series and color for the homeless and the poverty series. And also, being a human, what's the emotional toll that this takes on you? Um, well, I'm not human, Illuminati. Um, <laughs> just kidding. Um, um, well, th that's actually, the toll is, uh, it's pretty rough. And um, I was out with the AP photographer last night, and we were talking about I, these, these war guys. There's a reason that they, they, kill, they commit suicide. Um, 
and it's it, it's tough. Um, it, it took the, the summer of the gun took. A, I started drinking pretty heavily after summer of the gun. I don't. I mean, as opposed to me drinking heavily now, I guess <laughs> heavier. I don't know. Um, but I, I I did notice that, and I did notice you know depression and you know what's the point. Um, so it, it, it does. I had to step back after after gun and do the homeless series, which was a much more human story for me than just being out documenting murders all the time. Um, but the color is a good question. So I'm glad you asked that. I was hoping somebody would. Um, it's, I have a two-part answer. The, the, the first is I, I really believe that, that black and white is the language of photojournalism. Unless color really plays a part in the photo. So another, for instance, um, let me go up here to Masella. Okay, yeah. So I don't think that photo would resonate in black and white without that red and the yellow and the gangrenous foot. So that's why I chose it. The, the summer of the gun stuff was literally me seeing in black and white. Someone was murdered, cops aren't doing anything. There's no gray or color area. There's no reason to show the, the bloody curb has the same effect in black and white as it does in red, although the red would make it more you know, murder porny, like, oh, it's blood. Where the black and white is a little more uh, pensive, it really makes you think a little more than paying attention to the color. So that's, uh, that's how I judge all my work. If the color plays a part in the photograph, then it will definitely stay in color. If it has nothing to do with the photograph, I'll, I'll probably convert it to a, like a stark black and white. So, is that good? Okay, we have one last question, and it's mine. Uh, I'm sorry, no more questions? <laughs> sorry. Thanks, Joe. Um, no, wait, I have a question. <laughs> yes. um, so this is, it's a lot, it can be a lot to um, digest. Um, how, this may be sort of a cliche question, but how as um, people that are mostly from like the middle class creative community, with information like that, sort of what, what can we do? I mean, like you said in one article, like, you know, one of the goals in your Summer of the Gun series was to get complacent residents to give a shit, which I think is an amazing goal. And, and what, so what can we do with that information that is constructive? Why well, you gotta ask those hard questions, Katie? Yeah, right, right. Yeah, no. Um, that's well. I mean, the you know the, uh, the the homeless you know the homeless story pretty much answers that. I mean, it, it got it got people in the uh, whiter, more affluent community to, to care about the people that they passed every day as they went down Guilford Avenue in this in this community. Um, and and that's that's about it. I mean, the summer of the gun and, and war photographers. And those guys, it's kind of idealized to think that my work is going to have an effect, because it didn't have an effect on the crime rate. It didn't have an effect on the way the police treat the residents. But what it did was, I think it made other communities aware of actually what was really going on in their city. You know, they chose to look at it in the paper as opposed to turning it off on the news. You know, so even that, you know, that awareness is, is a first step, I think. And at least you acknowledge the fact that you live in Canton, relatively safe, or Fells Point, or Federal Hill, or Butcher's Hill. And this is going on literally t down the street from you. So I think just the awareness, to an extent, really uh, really is, is, is really good for people to know that. And then people can help with this. I mean, I got tons of emails, how can we help these people? You know, which to me was great. You know, that was great, that these people, because something I did, that that community was helped. And it also, um, put the city hall on notice that, that the media was there. So now all oh, this is the mayor, you know, the mayor sent people down there. And she said, I had no idea you were here. I'm like, you're the health and human services person. You're two blocks away from city hall. You didn't know this was here? Come on now. You know, because they don't want to look bad. So that, that is awareness. And that is what really works. That kind of stuff works. So uh, any more questions? Actually, more? Yeah, we have to get people to work. Oh, we do? We well, have I, haven't, I haven't talked about Amway yet. Have you guys, listen, <laughs> why have you here? I have these diamond plan. You, I can make you a lot of money. No. Um, seriously, but stick around because you'll be around.